have to remain committed to taking all necessary steps to create growth with jobs in the near future and in the medium term. Government is giving life to that commitment through its economic reform program. One of the many results, confidence has increased with international capital markets continuing and expanding business with Jamaica. Hello, I'm Arroyo Eubanks and you're watching Jamaica Magazine. Our focus today is economic growth and health, achievements under the economic reform program and vital information on the chikungunya virus to keep you safe. It all starts now with a reminder of the numbers to report water leakage. The National Water Commission, NWC, is now on a drive to rapidly fix leaks affecting the water distribution systems across the island. Two leak hotlines have been established. Report leaks by calling 733-5655 and 733-5656. You may also send a text to 838-LEAK, that is 838-5325. Remember that a little effort will make a big difference. Be a leak detective. Conserve on water today. Good day, I'm Andrea Chisholm and this is your JIS News for Thursday, July 24. A man for the people, humble and a devout Christian with unremitting and infectious optimism were just a few of the glowing praises bestowed on the late former Governor General Sir Howard Cook in Parliament Wednesday. Stacey Ann Smith has more in this report. In tribute to the former Senator and Member of Parliament, a special joint sitting of the Upper and Lower Houses was held to reflect on his contribution to Jamaica and Jamaicans. The tributes began with the President of the Senate and Speaker of the House of Representatives. For me, it is a sad and joyful occasion. And I say so, members, because the passing of Sir Howard is a major loss for our country. He has given selfless service to our country and it is difficult or impossible to replace an exemplary Jamaican such as Sir Howard. He was always willing to lend a listening ear and give advice and direction when it was needed. To Lady Cook and members of the fa his family, I say take courage in the knowledge that Sir Howard has served this country and his people well. For a little over three hours, several other members of both Houses of Parliament talked about Sir Howard's contributions to Jamaica's political development and governance, as well as personal stories that exemplified the character of the man. They were led by Prime Minister Portia Simpson-Miller and the leader of the opposition, Andrew Holness. For him, political representation was not an end in itself, but a means of service in the pursuit of people's development. He demonstrated an unqualified belief in the capacity of his countrymen and women to excel. A tireless dedication to service and community building and a burning passion for education and creative expression as pathways to liberation. I am humbled as I am honored by the opportunity to salute in this place, the seat of our democracy, the life and work of one who led so admirably. Sir Howard was one who served graciously impartially, conscientiously, and unceasingly. Members of the legislature also observed a minute's silence in remembrance of the late head of state who died on July 11 at age 98. Sir Howard is to be accorded a state funeral on August 8 at the Holy Trinity Cathedral in Kingston, starting at 10 a.m. Interment will follow at the National Heroes Park. Stacey Ann Smith reporting for GIS News.
In the meantime, the nation will observe two days of official mourning on August 7 and 8 for the late former Governor General Sir Howard Cook. The lying in state for the public will take place on Tuesday, August 5 at the Cultural Center in St. James and on Thursday, August 7 at the Macca University College in Kingston. On both days, the public will be invited to pay their last respects from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Condolence books are also open from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at King's House, the Office of the Prime Minister in Montego Bay, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Michael University College, People's National Party Headquarters and the Hope United Church. In other news, Parliament also dealt with the important matter of improving tax compliance in Jamaica this week. In a second sitting of the lower house on Wednesday, two critical pieces of legislation were passed which are aimed at improving tax collection and addressing tax avoidance and evasion in the country. There is a widespread, indeed an endemic culture of tax evasion and tax avoidance that has afflicted the country. The additional provisions in the Tax Collection Miscellaneous Provisions Act include a requirement for all corporate bodies, including registered charitable organizations and other persons, to be prescribed to file tax returns. It also authorizes the Commissioner General of Tax Administration Jamaica to provide information to credit bureaus regarding taxes owed by persons. The mechanisms, garnishment, publication, credit reporting, lien, etc., are tools of last resort. Even so, there is protection for the taxpayer. The Tax Penalties Harmonization Act, meanwhile, calls for amendments to increase the penalties for breaches under the Education and Income Tax Acts. Government's commitment to universal health coverage is getting strong support from the Pan American Health Organization, PAHO. At a recent high-level meeting on the issue, PAHO's representative said the organization was determined to lend its support to countries like Jamaica, which are implementing this policy. The organization will focus its resources on ensuring that the Americas is the first region in the world to achieve goal, this goal of universal health coverage. The recent dialogue will help inform PAHO's draft strategy for universal health coverage, which is being reviewed through similar consultations in a number of countries. And finally, Minister of Labor and Social Security Derek Kellyer is now providing oversight for the Agriculture Ministry, while Portfolio Minister Roger Clark is on medical leave. While away, Minister Clark will maintain ongoing contact with Minister Kellyer to ensure that priority issues for the sector continue to be addressed. Jamaica House says Prime Minister Portia Simpson-Miller has extended every good wish to Minister Clark for a successful treatment and a speedy return to active duties. Minister Clark will leave the island on the weekend for the United States where he will undergo surgery to treat a back condition. Based on the nature of the operation, Minister Clark is expected to make a full and timely recovery. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Andrea Chisholm. Thank you for watching. It keeps our bodies working. Our food nutritious, our living and working spaces clean and our lives comfortable. Water, the most precious resource necessary for the sustenance of life on our planet. Don't waste it. Let's conserve on this critical commodity. In the house, invest in storage containers and buckets. Take quick showers instead of long baths and invest in water-efficient shower heads, toilets and faucets. You may also want to consider one-pot meals and cooking methods that don't require much water. You could also wash fruits and vegetables in a bowl and reuse the water on your plants or grass. When cleaning dishes, fill both sinks and use one for washing and the other for rinsing. The leftover water can be used to wash off the concrete or asphalt in your yard. If you must wash your car at home, aim for once a fortnight and use a bucket to do the washing instead of running the hose. Don't delay. Start your water conservation practices today. It wasn't easy, but we did it. Passing all four IMF tests in the first year of the program and in the process regaining confidence with international capital markets. We were also able to achieve a reduction in the current account deficit, closing the gap between imports and exports. It took hard work and lots of sacrifices. Andrea Chisholm has more on the progress we've made so far.
With Jamaica passing all four tests from the International Monetary Fund IMF in the first year of the program, the international capital markets have again started to do business with Jamaica, signaling confidence in the government's economic reform program. In July 2014, government raised 800 million US dollars through a bond offer at an interest rate of 7.625% over 11 years. It's Jamaica's largest transaction on the international capital markets to date and the fastest to be executed, being announced, launched and priced in 3 hours. The initial plan was to get 500 million US dollars, but after consulting with technocrats both locally and overseas, the government accepted 300 million US dollars more. What this does is lock in what is likely to be the lowest interest rate for some time. It can always be wrong, but the, but the Federal Reserve has indicated that they are going to be ending tapering this fall and that the prognosis is that rates are going to rise. The money from the bond will allow the government to fully finance this year's budget, fund its debt maturities for the next 12 months and reduce Jamaica's vulnerability to shocks in the next year. The fact that the international community is once again lending to Jamaica and not just short term but 11 years is significant uh, and says something about their confidence in our policies. <music> Another piece of good news for the Jamaican economy is the reduction in the current account deficit, closing the gap between imports and export. The Bank of Jamaica announced recently that Jamaica's current account deficit for the January to March 2014 period was 100.6 million US dollars. This means that Jamaica is importing less than it did in the corresponding period last year, when the current account deficit was 400.6 million US dollars. For 2012, Jamaica recorded a current account deficit of 14.8%, 11.5% for 2013, and so far in 2014, 8.8%. When you ask the economists what kind of current account deficit can a country like Jamaica afford, they say it would be about 6%. So we are on our way there. But that's not all. Inflation is also trending down. From January to May this year, total inflation was 2.4%, 1.2% lower than the corresponding period last year. Both the reduction in the current account deficit and inflation allow the central bank to release foreign exchange into the market to slow the rate of depreciation of the Jamaican dollar. One of the reasons for the foreign exchange rate depreciation is to stay competitive with the US dollar. So if they, are, if they are experiencing inflation that is much lower than ours, then we have to devalue to keep the competitiveness. To the extent that our inflation is falling and coming closer and closer to, say, US inflation, then the reason to continue the devaluation subsides. It is not the first time in recent months that the Bank of Jamaica has intervened and the policy remains the same. As the governor has stated on more than one occasion, the Bank of Jamaica will intervene when the markets become disorderly, not when speculative pressures build up. They set the price, but when it is assessed that they are really out of work, um, central banks will intervene. Uh, you see it happening in the European Union, uh, everywhere. At the end of June, Jamaica's net international reserves stood at 1.376 billion US dollars, 223 million US dollars more than targeted. And what's more, the finance minister told Parliament recently that based on the government's assessment, Jamaica should pass the fifth IMF test for the quarter ending June. A team from the IMF will visit Jamaica in August to indicate if all structural benchmarks and quantitative targets for the April to June quarter were met. The Jamaican economy is improving, but the Simpson-Miller administration isn't ready to relax. The government remains focused on the need for further growth. The priority must now be on growth and job creation, and the prospects look good. I'm aware of both committed investments and those nearing finalization of over three billion US dollars across a range of sectors, including agriculture, tourism, ICT, BPO, energy, and port operations. 
These investments relate to new projects and will be undertaken primarily by foreign investors over the next 12 to 18 months. But there are also numerous local investors who are stepping up to the plate. This is just the beginning, Mr. Speaker. Our progress must not only be sustained, but amplified. And this will depend on the continued support of the government in its widest sense, the private sector and the international community. If we do so, we will be laying a foundation which will guarantee that Jamaica will be the place of choice to live, work, raise families and do business as we get into the further years of the 21st century. I want to wish and tell you. You know me can't find him for a Wait. I know when they know. Watch me, honey. Hey, Chantal, where you at? G-I-S. No, most you don't know say that the program are the best. Them always the places where you have progress. I'm here to them there. Don't me now if you guess. I'm most Manchester's finest. Hey, hide the remote, no change the station. But we'll we soon come back with more information. From the, the school and the teacher where you are. Number one, from the school and the program where you are. Number one. <laughs> It is most significant, ladies and gentlemen, partners, that we are all sitting together with the conviction to move in one accord. At this time, we must lay the foundation to ensure that the next generation will enjoy an even better quality of life than we do. We have to remain committed to taking all necessary steps to create growth with jobs in the near future and in the medium term if we are to achieve the outcomes which the Partnership of Jamaica envisaged. As we meet today, I expect us to listen carefully and critically, to be honest in our sharing and to demonstrate what has been the spirit of the last two years and more a determination to find the best solutions available in the national interest. I also expect that at the end of this process, we will have adopted measures which will improve the work of the Council itself and the extension of the partnership model in other areas of our governance. The chikungunya virus has been in the news for a while now, as Jamaicans keep track of its spread in neighboring countries. Then last week, the health ministry confirmed one imported case in the island. Government has since heightened its response to stop any outbreak of the virus. Part of the response is an intense public awareness campaign, and our next feature supports that mission to educate you on the chikungunya virus. <laughs> According to the World Health Organization, chikungunya is a viral disease which is transmitted to humans by infected Aedes aegypti mosquitoes. After being bitten, it takes between four to seven days for symptoms to appear. 
The main ones include high fever and severe joint pain, usually in the lower back, ankles, knees, or wrists. Infected persons may also experience joint swelling, rash, headache, muscle pain, nausea, and fatigue. Although chikungunya does not often result in death, joint pains and stiffness can last for months and even years. It may become a source of chronic pain and disability, resulting in the individual being unable to attend school or work. It is advised that anyone experiencing symptoms of chikungunya should visit their doctor or the nearest health center immediately. The first outbreak of chikungunya was in southern Tanzania in 1952. Then, in 2013, the French part of St. Martin reported the first confirmed case in the Caribbean and Latin American region. Since then, it has spread to approximately 28 countries and territories in the region, with more than 5,000 cases confirmed by mid-July 2014. Chikungunya has also been identified in nearly 40 countries in Asia, Africa, Europe and the Americas. There is no specific treatment for the chikungunya virus, nor is there a vaccine, so treatment is directed primarily at relieving the symptoms. During this period, infected persons should ensure that they get plenty of rest, drink enough fluid to prevent dehydration, and take the medication prescribed by their doctors. Mosquitoes that bite infected persons will become infected and are likely to spread the virus when they bite other persons. So it's important that we take measures to protect ourselves from being bitten. We can start by identifying and reducing possible mosquito breeding sites. Ensure that once a week we inspect our homes, schools, business places, churches. This mosquito is a day biting mosquito and it lives in and around where people live and congregate. Therefore, we want to ensure that the water that is settling is removed. The message of scrubbing the flower vases carefully, the pet containers with water, ensuring that all tiles are emptied, tins are punched with holes before they are discarded, are still applicable for control of the chikungunya virus spread. Other measures include covering the body as much as possible by wearing long-sleeved clothing and using insect repellent containing DEET. As for those traveling to countries with confirmed cases of chikungunya, The main advice is to prevent mosquito bites. We also say, look at how you are clothed. Try and protect your exposed skin. So it's the wearing of light-colored clothes, wearing long sleeves, pants if necessary, socks. Also, because the mosquito is still there, it is to ensure that persons should sleep under a mosquito net. The Ministry of Health has been putting measures in place for more than two years in anticipation of the chikungunya virus reaching our shores. In fact, it was the ministry's heightened surveillance system that detected Jamaica's first imported confirmed case in mid-July. It is something that is more favorable for any country when the first case that you recognize is imported because then you can take the containment measures, meaning that you are ensuring that you limit their contact with any mosquitoes by caring for them under a net, limiting their movement and doing the vector control. We're also ensuring that at our points of entry, when visitors return to the island from any of the countries where transmission is occurring, that we alert them to the fact that if they display any signs and symptoms, they should check with their doctors or any of our health facilities. Hurricanes can strike at any time. In the event of one, be prepared to act quickly. If a hurricane watch or warning has been issued, review your home disaster response plan. Map out likely routes to evacuate if your home is at risk and confirm with relatives or friends you plan to stay with. Also, confirm the location of the nearest shelter. Check your emergency supplies and restock if necessary. Remember, disasters do happen, so be prepared.
taking responsibility to avoid starting bushfires and getting rid of mosquito breeding sites are two major social concerns needing our involvement. And the authorities have come out to remind us of the consequences. There are tremendous pressure um, on the fire service at this time because of the fires. Many of them are illicit and some of them are started by slash and bird farmers. And uh, I always want to use this opportunity to ask our citizens, don't light any fire at this time. It is a danger to life and property. And um, where it's absolutely necessary, you have to exercise maximum care and caution. Desist from using open flame um, for whatever reason, because it's very dry, it's very windy, and that's all it needs for you to have a spark that will cause a massive fire. Ensure that once a week we inspect our homes, schools, business places, churches. Most persons might say, well, it's dry, so there's no water settling. But we have noted in the past in a number of communities that storage containers for water are very good breeding sites for mosquitoes. So persons will collect water mainly for domestic or other use. And we urge that these containers, um, the drums, the basins are very tightly covered because the mosquitoes can lay their eggs and then they can develop into the adult mosquito. Don't let money be the reason you miss out on this year's Jamaica Festival events because the Jamaica Cultural Development Commission has you covered on the financial front. We recognize the economic constraints and so we have maintained the price for the past two, three years, just a thousand dollars for admission. And you can obtain your tickets um, at a pre-sold price at nine hundred dollars at the JCDC and other outlets that will be published in the press. Are you a public sector worker? You two are covered. All public sector workers will be able to buy their tickets at eight hundred dollars. And these are these tickets will have to be purchased at the JCDC because um, persons will be required to show their ID or a pay stub or anything to identify them as a public sector worker. Tickets will also be uh, available online at www.jcdcjamaica.com. So grab your family and friends and go out and enjoy the celebrations because this is Jamaica or Jamaica. I should be This is how we close the show for today, but we don't have to lose this connection. Keep the link via our website, jis.gov.jm. Send us some feedback via email or a tweet at JIS News. Join us again tomorrow, same time, same station. On behalf of the production crew, I'm Aroya Eubanks. Take care. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.